why can't a scientist actually tell the rest of the world what science has discovered in her own words? Why do we need a third party intermediary, uh, a journalist, typically a male journalist, by the way? Why not from my mouth? And so we booked a room in another Canadian city, Montreal, and I, I sat there and I, I worked on really, I think, what became the core of this book. And it was in that hotel room that I said, you know, we have to tell people what grit is, how it's not the same thing as talent, and why it still matters. We have to tell people how you might be able to develop grit, should you want to be a little more passionate and a little more persevering. And then finally, in this book, we have to tell people about the rest of the world, because gritty people, no matter who they are, need people to encourage them. They need introductions that say, you will not believe what this person is about to tell you. They need encouragement. Because grit, though the John Wayne image has some resonance and some truth to it, is really not just about the individual against all odds. It's about the individual with tremendous support, great families, wonderful bosses, terrific and loyal colleagues. That's actually the crucible of grit. Michael Bloomberg, the philanthropist and former mayor of New York City, said recently that his entire philanthropy philosophy is to find one small thing and to work on it. And in a sense, that's what experts do. They don't go to practice and say, today, I am going to be a better soccer player. They fractionate what it means to be a soccer player into tiny, tiny little parts. And then they practice each part one by one, which is the only way that human beings can practice anything. One small thing that you could do better for being a grandmother, for roasting a chicken, for being a book agent, for being an accountant, one small aspect of your job that you can do better today than you did yesterday. And then you have to try. Focus 100%. Many experts say that when they're truly practicing at their edge, they do it alone. Even, for example, basketball players say that they do their hardest, most effective practice alone which is fascinating because basketball is, so far as I can tell, a team sport. Now, many of us don't have jobs that we can do alone, but I think the message is, how engaged can we be? How concentrated can our effort be? The more concentrated, the better the learning. Oh, this is a great question. What am I learning now? Like, for example, what's not in the book? Um, two things, um, are, at least, are not in the book. One is the relationship between creativity and, and grit. And in my introduction, it was noted that creativity and grit are not the same thing. Um, we find that exactly in our data, that being a divergent thinker, an original thinker, somebody who puts things together in ways that are novel and useful, that's not the same thing as passion and perseverance. You can be creative and gritty or uncreative and gritty. You, know, you can have every combination. I will say this, that I'm a big fan of originality and creativity because I think for almost every endeavor in the modern economy, you actually have to do exactly that. So I'll use that question to say that I don't think that grit is the only thing that matters. I think creativity matters enormously. I think Emotional intelligence, which is also different from grit, I think that matters enormously, particularly in some careers, and certainly in our relationships. I think honesty and integrity and just being nice, I think they matter, and I don't study those things. Broadly, Aristotle considered all of these things aspects of character. So I will end my response to that by saying that grit is one aspect of character, but character is plural. And it's for that reason that I run a nonprofit called the Character Lab, so that we could figure out how to encourage the growth of children's grit, but also their creativity, and also their emotional intelligence, and their gratitude, and their honesty, and their integrity.